Yeah, Thomas Hobbes has two kinds of uh, law. What is, the first one is Thomas Hobbes' theory of natural right, and the second one is Thomas Hobbes' theory of natural law. There are, he distinguishes between natural rights and natural law. By natural right, he means to say a man is doing what he thinks is best for him, which means a man pursue what he desire and a man pursue what he wanted to pursue in his own selfish interest without thinking the interest or right of other, without thinking that other also has the same right, which means Thomas Hobbes maintained that natural rights is with man. He pursue, man pursue what he think is best for him, irrespective of what would be the repercussions on the other. He does not recognize the right of other, but he only recognizes his own right in his, in his theory of natural right, okay? Again, he also say that there are natural law. What, then what is natural law? What does it imply? According to Thomas Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes maintained or say that natural uh, law implies that there is certain restraining power, certain restraining power that is man's reason. Man is endowed with reason. And this reasoning power of man restrains man to behave as he likes to behave, which means that it is by the law of nature that man is obliged to renounce some part of his claim for the realization of, of a better and more meaningful life. This is a positive side, of, I mean, natural law is a positive uh, side of his theory, which means that uh, because of the existence of natural law, man could renounce some part of his claim for the realization of, uh, realization of a better and a more meaningful life without uh, natural law. If a man live only with natural rights, I think life would be impos impossible. But there is a restraining power that is natural law. That is natural law is uh, that man embodiment of uh, what is called uh, rationality, rationality, or uh, rash rationality restrict man to behave as he likes to behave because if he behave, if there is no uh, such a restraining power, life will never be a happy life. So life in the state of nature is governed by two, two rights, two, two rights that uh, Thomas Hobbes called natural rights and that of natural law, that is state of nature. When I talk about state of nature, I mean to say that before the existence of a state, state authority, society was there and society was not having any authority to govern. And that state is called pre-civil society or state of nature. State of nature and state pre-civil society is the same thing, more or less the same thing. Uh, therefore, uh, in, however, he said that in the pre-civil society, the, the, the presence of natural law uh, makes men to live a more meaningful life but not a perfect life. But the, the presence of natural rights makes life horrible, difficult, and he characterizes uh, life in the state of nature uh, because of natural rights. 
uh, as ugly, nasty, rude, solitary, and sore. So, what happened the next? Life in the state of nature was horrible, it was difficult, so how do men overcome this kind of life? Hope said, this is possible only when men abandon his natural rights to all things. When men abandon his natural rights, his natural right to all things. This abandonment of natural right must, however, be mutual and reciprocal. That is to say that uh, this abandonment of natural right must be reciprocal. That means men, each man, must abandon their natural rights so that they can live peacefully in the state of nature where there was no authority to enforce any kinds of law. Each man must agree with other men. Each man must agree with other men to refrain from exercising his natural liberty and keeps the promises he made. That is to say that uh, men together with one another agreed to refrain from exercising their his or her natural rights and keep the promises he made. He made the promises that I will keep uh, aside my natural rights because my natural right, exercise of my natural right is making a problem, life difficult, so I will re yeah, renounce my natural right. That is the promises made by, the, uh, by men. Justice is keeping is in the keeping of promises, made and justice is the failure to keep promises. But Thomas Hobbes said that. Now, man is free to yeah, discontinue or disrespect the promises he made. He had promises, he had promised to be abide by uh, the contract he entered into with other men that we have to live together peacefully in mutual respect and honor and but men happen to could happen to break these promises and when me, men happen to break these promises what will happen there is no authority to enforce uh, to force him to ob obey or to uh, keep his contract his agreement with other there is no authority to govern him, so what will happen? Life is difficult. Life will be difficult. But we have to remove this difficult life by means of a contract, a social contract. That is a social contract. That is to say that men agreed to one another. Men agreed to one another to live peacefully together. And for this, they agreed to create a civil authority who will govern them, who will make laws, rules, and regulations for the, uh, which are to be followed by, the, by men. But the contract is between and among the people themselves. They agreed to create a civil authority, authority which will have a power over them, them all, and if anybody break that, their so the contract, uh, then the civil authority that has been created out of contract will give punishment accordingly. Okay? Social contract. What is social contract? As we have said, without yeah, talking about social contract, the theory of Thomas Hobbes uh, and then John Locke and Rousseau will be incomplete because the basis of state is social contracts, social contract in the case of Thomas Hobbes, John Law, and Rousseau. So let us see social contract theory of Thomas Hobbes. Uh, they have different, different kinds of the social contract. 
uh, for one that is Thomas Hall, he has uh, met that the party to the contract is the people themselves, not the authority and the people. And uh, John Locke said the party to the contract is uh, between the people on the one hand and the authority on the other hand. Uh, this is how a social contract is different from one another. And now we will discuss social contract theory of Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes, after having developed his theory of human nature, natural law, state of nature, and natural rights, proceeded to develop his theory of social contract. After discussing, deliberating on, uh, developing his theory of human nature, natural law, and state of nature, he went on, he proceeded on, to develop his theory of social contract, which is the basis of state or modern state, state according to him. Uh, in the case of earlier contract, the contract were made between the people and the sovereign. That there were earlier con contract, earlier contracts, who were making the contracts between the people and the sovereign. The people and the sovereign. Now he is different now. He is making a, a contract between and among the people themselves. The sovereign or the king or the queen is not a party to the contract. The a party to the contract is the people who are living in the state or in the society are a party to the contract only. And the terms, the term of contracts is binding on the people on the subject, whereas it is not binding on the sovereign or the king or the queen. Okay. It, the whole contract was purely a contract entered into by the people, among the people and for the people. Hope social contract theory is such that the contract was purely a contract entered into by the people among the people and for the people, okay? Here, no mention was made about the sovereign or the king or the authority, which means the king was not a party to the contract. The sovereign was not a party to the contract. People were a party to the contract and people are binded by the provisions, the terms and uh, conditions of the contract, but the king or the sovereign is not bound, bounded by the term of the contract, which means the king or the queen or the sovereign is an absolute sovereign having uh, sovereign, uh, absolute sovereign power over citizen and subject. And even if he fails to protect the life and property of the people, uh, people cannot or has no people have no right to criticize him. Hope social contract theory is a two tier contract. First, by institution that is men out of their impulse unite to create a civil society. Second, by acquisition that is superior power threatens men with destruction and the fear of men for being destroyed and eliminate, compel them to unite and seek peace. The first is the institution, that is the state, a contract. Uh, according to Thomas Hope, the first uh, uh, tire of contract is the creation of the state through a contract. The creation of a, con a state through a contract. Here, men out of their impulses unite to create a civil society. That is, men without, uh, uh, um, because of their social impulse, the need, their needs, uh, decided to create a civil society. And that's the second one is a civil society that was created was there to 
protect the civil society to stay on and the power that is to say that the second by acquisition of superior power that civil society has a superior power treating men with destruction if and the fear of men for uh, being destroyed the fear of men for being destroyed <coughs> by the civil society or the authority make men to obey the provisions of the contract the terms of the contract so men unite together and they refuse to disobey the order of the king or the order of the authority because if they disobey the order of the authority, they will be de eliminated or they will be destroyed. So, because of because for fear of uh, being eliminated, people obey the authority. Okay, out of the two, out of these two, the first is ten percent social contract. Out of these two contract. The first one is the state, that is the state, is 10% contract. The second one is 50% contract. Okay. The second one is a 50% contract. And then, and the point here is, it is not the desire for power and glory that compel men to enter into a contract, but rather it is the desire to secure security of life. We know that in a civil, sorry, a pre-civil society, in a state of nature, there was no security of life, there was no security of property, life was always insecure. So, men wanted to live in peace, in secure. Men wanted to live a secure life. For this, they created a civil society who will give them security of life and property. That is the reason why social conjecture was developed. And here, Thomas Hobbes was speaking about, in, was uh, speaking in support of the absolute monarch in England. Okay. He wanted to uh, influence the people. He wanted to convince the people uh, to support he, the absolute monarch, because according to him, only absolute, absolute monarch, the absolute king, can keep peace and order in the English society by the time. Yeah. And also, the reason why men wanted to uh, create a civil society is that Man has a reasoning power. Reason in man is an integrate. Uh, yeah, reason is an integrate integral part of man, and man's reasoning power make him to realize the futility of living in a constant state of fear, perpetual fear of death and destruction. Reason in man make man. Uh, to realize that, to realize the futility of living in a constant or perpetual fear of death and destruction, then man by reason could accept the principle of not doing to others what they think is not is unreasonable to do to be done by the, by to be done to himself. That is to say that. Every man is endowed, according to Thomas Hobbes, every man is endowed uh, uh, reasoning power, reasoning capacity, and this reasoning capacity in man uh, make men to realize that uh, futility of uh, living in a particular state of warfare. So, this make him to realize that, to realize, to make, realize that doing something that uh, yeah, to make him to do what uh, the thing that he wanted to be done to himself, to do something to other, which he himself, which other also may do to himself. 
that is to say that if he wanted a fair deal with him, he must have a fair deal with others. That is to say that do a thing to order what you think uh, is good to be done to yourself. That is the idea. And also the other reason as to why state was created is man's desire for self-preservation is responsible for the creation of state and that is if there is no state no man can preserve himself if there is no authority a man cannot uh, preserve himself be because it is only state that could protect him and his life and that could protect his property. So state was a necessity according to Thomas Hobbes. He according in his word, he said, let me read out his uh, word. Thomas Hobbes writes, a commonwealth is said to be constituted when multitude of men agreed and covenanted, everyone with everyone, that these men or that assembly of men would be the sovereigns. That is the creation of a commonwealth <coughs> that is agreed upon by every man to every man. In the context in the contract, every man would say, I authorize and give up my right of governing myself to this man or this assembly of men on this condition that thou give up thy right to him and authorize all his actions in like manner. And that is, uh, uh, all men say, I authorize, I authorize and give up my right of governing myself to this or that authority with the condition that thou give up thy rights to him and authorize all his actions in a like manner. That means men give up their rights and liberty, glory and everything to that authority. <coughs> that authority is what we call the state. Does men enter into a contract not to do one another what they wanted not to, what they, one, they would not wish to have been done to themselves. But men desire for power, glory, self-preservation self continues to hound the contract making it, making it a constant risk of breaking up. Therefore, there is need for something restraining power that is strong enough to compel men to, yeah. We have to realize here, we have to know that though men authorize, promise to give up his rights, his power, his authority to a, a civil authority, okay? Uh, yeah, M since man is always haunted by self, the wish, the, des the desire for self-preservation, there is always a possibility of man breaking his uh, contract, his uh, yeah, promise. Here in this case, when men start uh, try to break his uh, yeah, contract or his agreements with one another, the authority will be there to punish him and protect the civil authority and its power. Regarding uh, yeah, who are the uh, party to the contract, we have briefly mentioned that 
The party to the contract, according to Thomas Hobbes, was the people. Okay? He said the party to the contracts were individual, natural men, individual, natural men, and not the people as a group. The sovereign is not a party to the contract, but he is the creation of the contract. In other words, individual is the creation of the sovereign. The individual is the creation of the sovereign. The state was the created out of was created out of social contract is a single personality taking place of the uh, many individuals, that is, a party to the contract is those individual men and women who uh, gave up their rights and liberty to the civil authority, and the individual uh, is, of course, the creators of the sovereign. But they are not, though the, the individuals are created the civil authority, uh, they do not have uh, the authority over the thing that they have created. They have created the authority, but they do not have the authority over the, thing, the civil society that they have created. Okay. Okay. For today, this much you do. We continue next class. John Locke. The three